Welcome, adventurers. Today we're going to turn all this stuff into this stuff. Now, it's supposed to be Necromunda Ashway stuff. Now, I saw the price. And I had a coronary. Because that is ridiculous. So I went to the dollar store to get all those things. And I mean, all of it. I spent about 15 bucks. Well, at least on what I use today. I got about 30 bucks worth of stuff in total. I'm going to start with making some hexagons. Which is, using a dollar store compass, you make a circle, pick a point on the edge of that circle, bisect it the same distance away, repeat until you have your six intersecting lines of your circle. Then, make them far more visible than the shiny white dry erase practice board for children that I got at the dollar store. Repeat the sizes, because you need multiple sizes, do multiple little platforms. Cuts easily with scissors, as you see here. Which also means it cuts pretty easily with uh, a box cutter or Ulfa knife or whatever. Now we're going to take some foam core because this stuff does not take texture very well. And this is ready board from the dollar store. We're going to trace out the size of our hexagons on that so that we have something that will actually take texture that we will attach to the surface using hot glue. Repeat that cut out eventually <laughs> and of course peel it and hot glue it to the hexagons peels so easily I love ready board for that and it's great for texture but it's lousy for rigidity which is why it needs some sort of backing so since my local dollar store had been ransacked or something uh, it was limited on available supplies, so the closest thing I could get for any kind of cardboard was these little boards. Cut in the pattern, just like I showed you in my very first video on basic sci-fi tiles. Using an ink pen, sharp knife, you can make your little rivet holes. And there you go. Now we need to do something about the edge, now that we've made a bunch of these in different sizes. I think I did 6 inch four inch and two inch diameter now we need a wall to protect our little guys up here when they're running around or or gals the people to pr protect the little plastic people so they can hide behind them when they're being shot at or hopefully not fall over like a guy guardrail I decided on an inch and a quarter and for those of you who are pestered by this I do go back and forth between metric and imperial because well I have both systems, I might as well use them, I mean my rulers. So I cut a piece inch and a quarter, I measure it to match one of the facets of the hexagon, then I trim off the edges at a bevel, it's roughly 45 degrees, as you can see I'm doing it by hand, and then I make my rivet holes like I've done before with the ink pen, make sure it looks good, apply a little hot glue, and stick that in place. as you see. We're going to repeat that for some of the pieces that have walls and for the ones that don't have walls we'll do something else. Here's the uh, kind of finished one. I made a small little trim piece to cover that exposed edge and that's a kind of a shooting nest or platform. Now here's my first piece and you see right there it's cracked. I figured out how to keep that from happening there. It cracked a little less, and as I was working around, I figured out how to do it. And so I'm going to show you. First thing, to make sure we have the right width. We just line it up to the edge of the the edge of, along the side of the ready board here to make the good thickness. Cut it off. Peel it. That peels so smooth. I want to show you again, just like that. Yeah. Start off with a little hot glue begin to uh, well, attach it and begin to wrap it around. I left it a little long on purpose. Now when you get to your corner, compress it against the corner while slowly bending it. So using your index fingers, you'll see me do, or thumb rather, you press. So you compress the foam a little bit. It keeps it from tearing. And you'll complete this all the way around. I believe you could even get around a 90 degree angle doing that. Now that I'm getting close to the end, I'm going to cut this off a bit of an angle there. Then I've already compressed and started the bend, so it bends very easily now. 
cut it a little long on purpose to give myself a little extra material to work with. Measure twice, cut once, or the other saying, I've cut it twice and it's still too short. And here, I've lined it up. There's a little bit of an overhang which we'll take care of very easily. A little hot glue to hold it in place. And while the hot glue sets in a few seconds, I use my finger to kind of compress that corner where it's slightly overhung. And then I use the X-Acto knife to cut off any excess. Using the pin here, I make my rivet holes like you've seen. And repeat that several times. Now I did make a hab pod for this. And I wanted it to have the same hexagonal beveled edges. So I stacked up ready board and ran it through the hot wire table just like that. You could do it with a knife. I have a hot wire table. I use it. And there's that. Now these are 4.5 millimeter crochet needles, or knitting needles rather. Uh, they cut really easily as you see. I decided I want them to be about two inches long, two and a half maybe. Cut a little bevel into the end so they butt up together real well to the other piece and just regular model cement glues these together. Now I make a little box to house these in to attach to the bottom of the unit. In hindsight, I should have just poked them into the styrofoam. That would have probably been easier, looked better, and worked better in the long run. But this functions, just not as neat looking as it could have been. It's kind of bulky and boxy. Now I need some sort of post to stand these things on, so my dollar store golf club kit uh, because I am horrible at golf and so I don't play it. Uh, but this will be the pedestal that the Hab Pod, in fact, all of our platforms stand on. I cut out an octagon to attach it to. And I cut out some wedge shaped pieces of that same practice board that I'm going to sandwich ready board between. Just using simple hot glue to hold it all together. The ready board gives it thickness. The practice dry erase board gives it rigidity a little hot glue on there and now we have one of four feet that will go on this now that they're all attached we attach the entire apparatus to the bottom of our hab pod and now we have a freestanding elevated ash waste structure now these seven and a quarter by 2.875 inch boards measure to 3.6 millimeters to the middle and so I bisect all of them that way because these are going to be the planks that go between my platforms. I take one more and bisect it again so it's like one and a half mils and I cut quarter inch lengths of that to make little teeth tabs that it's going to slot in. More ready board with homemade texture on it using the good old ink pen and knife technique. And of course, you know, a gazillion more rivets with the ink pen. All the, all the way down, both sides, and then each little panel. Now hot glue again, leaving one side of the ready board paper on because I find that it holds better when you do that for some reason. Uh, it doesn't melt the foam as quickly either. I mean, it just does a lot of, it adds a lot of benefit. And besides, save time by only peeling one side. I do that six more times. And I'm going to make a mess here in a second. But if you want to see how not to make a mess doing this, you should check out my uh, video on scatter terrain. Oh, and there it is. While I'm cleaning that up, you should make a suggestion in the comments about something you'd like to see me make or make a mess of in the near future. I'd love to hear from you. Now I base them all in this espresso brown satin paint to give it kind of a base rust look. And I'm gonna dab on a vanilla khaki-ish color over that and the reason I'm doing that obviously is so I can have the rust colored base shine through and I'm just using sponge to do this and I figured uh, in the ash wastes or some apocalyptic planet or something uh, the heat of the Sun might be a problem so people probably paint things in light colors if they can especially if it's in a desert environment they're gonna want to kind of blend in as well as try to keep it cool so that was my reasoning for this I know zero about Necromunda or the Ashway, or well, most wargaming for that matter. I just like building stuff for sci-fi. And now I'm a big sci-fi nerd and love role-playing games about science fiction, so that's what I did there. Now I figured this team is the red team, because I wanted to 
paint some stuff red. So using sponge and paintbrush, I pick out certain things like any cloths, like the tarp over the one tower, uh, a uh, kind of curtain over the hab section. And I just pick out with this red paint, kind of dab it in splotchily, thinly in some places, thicker in others, to really enhance that coloration and fade. Now I blend in that khaki with the same red and dry brush the cloth to give it an aged effect. Here I'm dabbing on some black, then just some cheap orange for some surface dress. And of course, wet down the surface with my spray bottle before applying my black wash and a silver dry brush, weathered metal. Now let's take a look at some glamour shots. There's the hab pod. I think it looks pretty interesting. One of the lower elevations that reaches the ground level. A kind of a covered shooting gallery, if you, if you will. Uh, more of an open, intermediate height. With multiple attachment points. Uh, kind of an intermediate one to transition. A central hub, if you will, with a big old flag. And a bunch of bridges that connect everything together. Now I tried to make this as interesting as possible in regards to the orientations. I changed everything up, tried to figure out various connection points. I enjoyed this so much that I feel like I need to make more of these now so that I can make an even bigger area uh, with more bridges and variations in height. Now some of the steeper ones, uh, if you go from a lower one to a higher one, uh, you will want to put something with more texture on your bridge, your uh, your raised areas, your bridges. Otherwise, your minis will slide down. But for the most part, everything worked really well. Obviously, playable interior in the hab pod. And yeah, there's Tiny and the whole gang fighting it out on this uh, ash waste Necromunda terrain. Well, thank you for watching. Now go have an adventure in crafting.